Hello, everyone. Good morning. It is the week of November 30, just after Thanksgiving. I hope you guys had a great holiday and rested up. I am doing this video to show you what it is that I am expecting of you this week in American literature. Now, we have talked about the 1800s in the United States as a time of rapid industrial growth and the reactions in culture and art and literature to that growth. Um, so far, we've obviously read how it's affected our country and the way of thinking and the way of life in the literature that was written at the time. But this week, we're going to look at the artwork that was done during this time. Now, um, we're going to talk about this thing called the Hudson River School, which is not a literal school, but it is a group of artists at the time who started creating art in the same way with similar aesthetics and similar subject matters. Um, they became known as the Hudson River School because they generally were formed and instructed all around the Hudson River of the Northeastern United States. Now, they didn't only paint in that region, they did go west as well, but it began there and a lot of the schooling and interaction between these artists formed around the Hudson River and led outward into the greater United States. I'm going to share my screen right now to show you the group project assignment Although actually we are going to do this individually, sorry, because we are remote. Okay, we would do it if we were in person. <clears throat> but I've changed it just to um, individual project. Okay, so the background here talks about more of what I was just saying, how art and painting at this time was in response to the industrial growth of America. And the way that they were reacting was to paint the landscapes of America. Now, uh, today, this sort of has a cliche um, reputation with painters like Bob Ross, who actually is fantastic. But at the time, this was new, and it was valued, and it was interesting. And I hope that you see some connection to the themes we talked about in other literary works like Huckleberry Finn, about the romantic and the sublime experience. That is exactly what these paintings were trying to capture. So like I said, this is a reaction to the Industrial Revolution and um, the Northeastern quarter of the United States became the, the focal point of this artistic practice. And together, this group of people and artists became known as the Hudson River School. This link right here goes to this um, the Met, Metropolitan Museum of Art website that features these artists and their paintings and a lot of information about what is now known as the Hudson River School. You can scroll through here and read even more about it. Your assignment is to check that website out. And then uh, the individual pages of all these artists and choose one. It can be random, it can be based on their work, it can be based on their life, uh, it can be based on their name, I don't care. Just choose one of these artists and then compose a PowerPoint presentation to present their life and work. Uh, you need to use at least three outside internet resources to, um, to gather your information. And I have included a sample work cited page to help you put that together. These links right here, these pages may be used as one of your three internet resources. If there are any questions about this, please reach out via email or respond in the stream to this video. Topics that you might want to consider around the presentation. You can organize your presentation to these topics. It's just a recommendation. You can do something different if you want, but I think this is at least a good place to start. 
So you'll want to start with the artist's life, then some samples of their work, analysis of their work, and relationships with other artists in the Hudson River School. And then contribution, contributions and legacy would be you finding something unique that that artist contributed or gave to the movement that we now value or can take away from it. Some analytical tidbits before I go. You might want to look at the subject of these paintings or the lack of a subject, meaning what is the focal point or is there a focal point? Some of them don't seem like they do have focal points. Um, if we look here, we do see a human in one of them, but like there are very few people <laughs> ever presented in these photos. That is kind of the point, and I want you guys to analyze that aspect, especially knowing what we know about the Romantic movement. So some of these paintings are just really gorgeous, and they started a new trend in America with landscapes that could not really be seen anywhere else in the world. Um, so I hope that you guys enjoy this project. It is supposed to be informative and enjoyable at the same time. Um, this will be a quiz grade out of 100 points, and it is due December 7, next week, Monday. So that was a little bit of a longer video to explain the Hudson River School, the assignment I'm giving on it, and some of the ways that you can analyze or use the website resources to your benefit as you do this remotely from home. But if you have questions, of course, you may reach out to me. We can set up a time to have a uh, meeting together um, or just send an email, and I can respond that way. Either way, good luck. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing these presentations, hopefully in person for those students who are hybrid next week when we go back to school, fingers crossed. Uh, in the meantime, stay safe, everyone, and thanks so much uh, for tuning in. Bye-bye.